All right, I think we're on now, right? Can, can everybody hear me? That was good, huh? Okay, take two. Uh, we can take two live, right? Good morning. Welcome to Garden America. We're a little bit past uh, 8 o'clock if you're watching or listening to us live here. Good morning. I hope you had a good week. We have uh, begun the weekend with your garden buddies. I'm Brian Maine, John Begnasco, Tiger Palafox. We stumbled out of the gate, but we're good to go. Tiger, um, I'm going to toss to you right away to make sure that we are good to go. Yeah. Are we good? You, you know, I was trying to last minute do a couple things at once, and I forgot to turn on the audio for the You, you were helping John <laughs> and his uh, iPhone <laughs> hook into our show so he could see the comments and the questions, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. We're having a lot of fun back here. Right. Hey, you know, well, off to a rough start is better than no start at all. And you know what? Let's be real. This isn't even that bad of a start. No. We're, we're live. We're running. Right. People can hear us. So the very first part of it, there was no audio. Yeah. But here's the beauty. When our webmaster, Daniel, uploads the show to our YouTube uh, page, yeah. that'll all be gone. It'll start perfect. Yeah. The audio's going to be there. Nobody know what happened. He cleans it up for us. It's kind of like a movie. You don't know the weird... Little errors or things right. that happen in movies, they, they take care of People that People love post. behind the scenes anyway. Yeah. You know, when yeah. things don't go right. So welcome, one and all. Uh, again, Mother's Day weekend. Uh, happy Mother's Day yep. to all of the fine mothers, loving mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day to my mother, my mother-in-law, and my wife, right? Yeah. How many uh, mothers do you have to be? Uh, right. Do you have to attend to? Right. And, and, you know, I can't wait for the kids to get older because in reality, it's like, well, they're supposed to be the ones doing the Mother's Day things. Right. For... They're not into it yet, are they? Kind of, maybe. Kinda, yeah, exactly. Another few years. Make some cards, do that okay. stuff. Um, yeah. Is worst John with us today? Hi, I was going to say the worst mistake that a uh, young husband can make is to utter the words, well, you're not my mother. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you don't ever never, say that. Never say don't that to your wife. That. Never, never, never. Yeah. So welcome to the weekend. No guests today. It's going to be just the three of us for the next uh, close to two hours. Right, Tiger? Yeah, but you know why? It's because it is Mother's Day, and we've talked about this in the past. Everybody knows it that listens to this program, that this is the official day that the East Coast kicks off their spring. That's right, Mother's Day They're weekend. All, they've all been waiting. Waiting for this time. It's, it's like they've been sitting out the door. Weather's warm. Exactly. Get out so there in, and do it. And if you check the weather, they've got some pretty nice weather happening right now. So, so anybody listening uh, to us uh, from what we would consider to be a cold part of the country, let us know what Mother's <laughs> Day is like on this, uh, what day? Today's the... Uh, Today's 13th the 13th of May. 13th of May, Mother's Day weekend. Let us know how the weather is. Yeah. If you live in a questionable cold area. Yeah, if you actually are going to be gardening right on the day that they say you can start. That'll be thing. That'll be the thing, right? So, John, you since you've been involved with East Coast Nurseries, um is it kind of like a big deal like when they open up on Saturday morning? Is it almost like the floodgates open on garden centers and stuff like that? Is it that? like opening day in baseball, John? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a sellout crowd. <laughs> There's um in in general, on the East Coast and Midwest, you figure you have 13 weeks right. of, to sell plants, and that's it. If you don't sell in that 13 weeks, you don't sell anything. Bye-bye so, bye, bye plants. Yeah. yeah, you spend the rest of the season trying to lose as little of what you make <laughs> during the spring yeah. until the next spring comes. So if it's raining, I, the thing that surprised me the most was being in uh, Minnesota. Minneapolis at a garden center. One um, was a Saturday, which Saturdays are always the biggest day yep. of the week, right? And it was raining cats and dogs, and they did a hundred and fifty thousand dollars that wow. day, which back then was a lot of money. Yeah, Probably that, is that now. That seems like right? a lot of money still, yeah. And and be, and they were a little upset that it rained so much because they said we should have done over two hundred thousand. But I said, I can't believe people come out in the rain. And they said, well, you, you know, to. it's either that or you don't have a garden. And yeah. you've been cooped up for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to get outside and just get involved in gardening. Yeah. It, yeah. And so it's just kind of a a neat kind of time where now we all are in the same boat. Because, you know, we talked about this in Southern California. We started, we started back in March, Kind of a spring kind of gardening oh, yeah. thoughts, planting vegetables. I, I never really stuff. stopped thinking about it, even <laughs> even in winter. I did enjoy the rain though, not having to water for several months. You know that has been a weird a weird element of this year, right? Not having to water so much, mm -hmm. and we so 
we're and we we are like a little bit behind in terms of gardening too. Like you you showed us that picture of your Pope John Paul, mm-hmm. beautiful white fragrant rose, right, right. beautiful bloom that it has on it. Um, and it is very normal for it to be blooming this time of year, but at the same time. Sometimes I'm sure you start even earlier because, A, we warm up earlier. That's exactly right. And then, B, because we had more rain, that also slows things down a little bit, too. Well, it's one of those things where I didn't even notice it. I looked out one day and went, what's that? A bloom, (laughs) you know? Uh, Yeah, like you hadn't seen them for so long. Had not seen it and never even saw the bud even begin. It was probably about four or five days into its bloom. Yeah. And so, and it's one of those very fragrant roses. Yeah. You know, I, I cut it, bring it in, put it in a vase in the kitchen, you know, tell my wife here, look what I, look what I grew for you. Yeah. She goes, yeah, me, right. You grew it for me. I've noticed the big difference. So I have that podocarpus hedge with all this rainwater. I've noticed the big difference in the health of the hedge along with the growth that's happened this year over years past because years past it was dependent on my irrigation system watering right. that hedge to get it to grow you know but this year i don't know i mean it was definitely the rain but it looks healthier it's growing more you know everything all about it's just so much better and I'm, I'm happy because obviously i want a hedge for a reason you want it to grow we were talking about this right. before the show started yeah. but um it's good hedges make good neighbors yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. absolutely what have you noticed from all the rain john in your in what I call the Bagnasco Nursery in Fort yeah. Brook. Well, now we're getting to the point where we haven't had rain for a while, so yeah, the weeds are getting harder to pull. <laughs> yeah, but for a while you could you you could pull them out with no problem. But the thing I've noticed most is thousands and thousands of snails. Really, everywhere. I mean. In my trash can, you know, from pulling weeds and dumping stuff in the trash can, you could open it up right now, and there'd probably be a hundred snails. Really, I haven't seen any so far, Uh, which is weird because we get them absolutely in the patio on the sidewalks. I can bring you some if you want. Yeah, only if they're decolate snails. No, no, that's what I'm thinking. I'm going to do is just throw decolates out. Yeah, turn them loose, let them go. Yeah. Yeah, but they're, I mean, the most snails I've ever seen in my entire life. That's funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just think it's so funny that something like that can happen um, so quickly. On on, it's just a natural thing. Like you, right. like where did these snails come from? They weren't here before, and now they're here. I mean, as an example, John, you went to Shreveport last week, and you mentioned this earlier, but um, the mosquitoes there. Yeah, and I'm getting a lot of mosquitoes at my house. Oh, which by the way, I used a um. There's a product called um, lawn repellent, lawn repellent, long bug repellent, long pest repellent from Natural Guard, um, and it's a granular product. And you just put it out in the yard. It's supposed to mosquitoes, I don't know, earwigs. From our, from our all fine friends at Fertilome. Exactly. And I used it, and it's great. Like a lot less mosquitoes in my backyard. But that is something that because of the rain, I feel like we're getting a lot more mosquitoes mm-hmm. at our home right now. And, right. And I don't mind them, but Janine hates mosquitoes. Well, you know what's coming out right now? Uh, people call them mosquito eaters or... Mosquito hawk? That that big flying one? Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yeah, what they're uh, crane flies Yes, is what they yes. are. right. And uh, they don't hurt anything. No. As a matter of fact, I think they only live for a few days. I agree. But they're in the soil. And if you have a lot of those and you don't want them, you have to put down a soil insecticide to kill the larva before they hatch out. Yeah, but those are very... They're just... They're more scary and a nuisance, right? Like yeah. Than anything else. Like they yeah. don't do anything bad. No, what they are they don't. called? What are they? Well, they're crane flies, but sometimes people call them mosquito eaters. I yeah, I see people call them mosquito hawks. Yeah. Because in and they don't eat mosquitoes. No, they they don't. Just, I think I think they just I don't flies? think they eat anything, <laughs> which is just, why they only live yeah. a few days. <laughs> it's like they survive on purely what they were given. They're just big flies, basically. Yeah. No, well, they look like giant mosquitoes. Yeah, they oh. look like giant. You know, I'm sure you've. I seen was thinking them. horsefly. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. That's, flies. A, that's a whole nother beast. Right, they look right. like giant mosquitoes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. this is the time of year where they come out, and then so they'll be in your lawns and your soil. And then what? In another couple of weeks for us, we're going to get all those beetles that come from the soil, like the, you know, the Japanese beetles, the June bugs, and all. You mean that the drunk, the drunk bug yep. that flies around? Yeah. yeah. Well, fortunately, we don't get Japanese beetles no, in California. The, what is it then? The what am I thinking of? The Why not? You're one. thinking of it's got kind of that greenish the fruit, fruit beetle. Fruit beetle. That's a yeah. fruit beetle. The it's giant got the greenish. One? The green one that yeah. dry that flies around drunkily. Yeah. Fruit yeah. beetle. Yeah, it has yeah. The, has the thorax is kind of green. 
Yeah. Yes. Does it have a thorax? thorax. <laughs> well done. It's a different. I think Dr. Seuss wrote a book about the thorax. <laughs> thorax. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know what? I know they're harmless, but I sure don't like them buzzing around me. Oh, heck no. Nobody Especially does. if they have no sense of direction, so they're going to bump into you. Yeah. They're like a small hummingbird. Fig beetles, they call them, too. Big beetle. Big beetle. Exactly. That's what it was. Hey, we're yes. going to have to take a break. We'll come back with John's quote of the week. We'll talk about John's trip to Shreveport, Louisiana. Everything's coming up roses. Welcome to the show. It's Garden America. Happy weekend to you, Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Pelafox. We're going to break for our friends on BizTalk Radio, our many fine sponsors, including Mosquito Dunks and Fertilome. Back after these messages. We are back from the break. Thank you for hanging in there with us, those on Facebook Live, Biz Talk Radio. Welcome to the show. We got the opening segment monologue out of the way, if you want to call it a monologue. John's got the quote of the week. Then we'll talk about Shreveport. We'll talk about the uh, the Rose Show, the auction, and what John uh, was doing last weekend while uh, your father was here, Fausto Palafox, yeah. on the show last week. John? John's still busy. John still, Tiger was helping John refresh his sorry I missed it. on the phone. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, I know we, we need the quote right now, but uh, uh, before I forget, there was someone who was supposed to be and supposed to be in Shreveport and wasn't there. But I thought of Tiger and how cool he would have thought if that person was there. You know who was Tiger? Peggy Martin. I was I was gonna say Were Peggy you? Martin. Yeah. yeah. You mean the Peggy Martin? Yeah. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. That would have been so cool. Yeah, yeah. It would have been really nice to meet her. Wow. Man. Oh man. If I ever meet her, I'd, it'd be like <laughs> you're gonna be out. like a little. It'd be like geeking out for sure. Yeah, you'd be like a little groupie. Right. How is your Peggy Martin rose doing? Oh, I took a picture of it recently. Yeah, let me see what it looks um, like. For um, because I because with the... all the tiger never waters. No. So with all the rain we've had, I I would think it would just be doing great. Yeah, it really is, and so it's it's taken off wonderfully, and it was in full bloom. Yeah, it's looking great. I'm kind of worried though because we're constructing an ADU, and that's it's not a fit directly affected by it, but it's it's back there. You know what I mean? And so it's one of those things I'm just gonna have to make sure to watch out for. See if I can find that. Anita Clevenger gave a talk on uh, rambling roses. It had nothing to do with Nat King Cole. First but, thing I thought of, yeah, rambling. I could see it in your head. Yep. But um, Ann Belovich uh, started, it was an amazing story, the history. She started collecting roses in her 70s, and she was, uh, uh, I think she sailed sh- sailed ships and boats around the world and stuff. She was an amazing woman, but in her 70s, she started collecting these rambling roses and planting them in uh at her house up in washington and she started getting them from all over the world and she now has a well i think she's dead now but she had the world's largest collection and usually when you think of ramblers especially in san diego you think oh, i don't have room for one yeah uh, and they only bloom once a year even though it's like a two-month period at least while they're in bloom but if you have a tree you have room for a rambling rose it'll grow right up a tree yeah so it was really interesting to to hear that talk and to learn a little bit about Ann and and uh, they're trying to bring her collection of roses to the uh, to Shreveport to the American Rose Society's headquarters. So you were talking about the location and how it's got a bunch of trees and more shaded. So do ramblers tolerate shade better? That, Some the do. fact that they can yeah. go up a tree. I only really have one, I think. Uh, there's a rose called um, Betty Sheriff that we got from England. And I planted, I had a eucalyptus seedling coming up that I didn't pull in time. <laughs> so now it's about 
30 feet tall. It, it was only, you missed about two week window. Right. <laughs> and I had this, this rambler in a five gallon container and I thought, what am I going to do with it? And I go, oh, I know, I'll just plant it next to the eucalyptus. <laughs> so now it's growing up the eucalyptus. So yeah. we'll see what that ends up looking like. Both may end up ha- having to come down eventually. But I, the, uh, one of the things I was going to say about ramblers is I I saw a few roses online. One was called Monster, <laughs> and another one it's was called House Eater. <laughs> house Eater, and that reminded oh. me of the rose that we saw, the Kiffsgate yep. rose. That's definitely a House Eater. Yeah, I love it. Okay, the quote of the week, Brian. It's from Hal Borland, and he said that man is wise in constantly in quest of more wisdom. But ultimate wisdom, which deals with beginnings, remains locked in a seed. There it lies, the simplest fact of the universe, and at the same time, the one which calls forth faith rather than reason. It's one heck of a quote. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot lot to think of. Right. There's a lot to digest in that. Seed seed for thoughts. And his name again? Hal Borland. Hal Borland. Yeah. I I do know that name. Yeah, we've had his quotes before. Yeah, we have. Yeah, good old Hal. Yeah. Okay, now let me see. <laughs> Here you, I am lost again. What are you looking for? I'm looking for... The show on your phone? Yeah, I have the show, but I don't have our comments. Um, we are caught up uh, the last a couple of comments early on about the weather. Now, I think somebody said 97 in Reading. Oh, my goodness. Early yeah, Reading on. is one it's of those from places. from winter to summer. Yeah, it's one yeah. of those places. Yeah, there's no in between. Cold. That's rough. That is tough. Because it's yeah, I mean, you because it also drops at night still during this time. Of what year about the too. plants? Yeah, that's they got to toughen up. They don't. They don't have jackets. They don't have a closet they nope. can dig into nope. and pull out a jacket or. It's like put jumping on a tank into the top. deep end in December, of a <laughs> pool outside. You know, it's right? Like, whoa, from hot to cold, cold to hot. Yeah. Um. So, Brian, what are you going to be working on this weekend? Oh, I can tell you. Yeah. Cleaning, sweeping the patio, cleaning it, trimming, uh, uh, maybe doing a little more fertilizing. The uh, what kind of broom do you have? You like the name brand? <laughs> like no, I. What I've I... got several brooms. I've got like an, a heavy duty all purpose broom for the outside. <laughs> Tigger's wondering why would you even ask a stupid question like that? I've got. A do you remember broom, the old type broom. brooms? The old type like they made it out of straw. Yeah, kind of yeah. like that, yeah, yeah. you know, that you would use in the, the 60s and the 70s yeah, to, to sweep. Broom. I think or, I actually have, corn I have one of those. Uh, the reason I bring it up is because I bought one. of them. They're really expensive yeah, now, like 50 cheap. bucks. Yeah. But it's the best broom for sweeping outdoors. I, I have one. Yeah. It's the straw, right? Like yeah. Like the yeah. little for, pigs, straw yeah. house. When you go to clean your patio on that, isn't that the best broom you've it ever is. had? It is. Yeah. Uh, the tomato plant, um, sugar... Sugary, sugary. Yeah, sugary. I'm amazed at how quickly it grows. Really, well, I got it every year. Tomato plants. Just, I have a whole bunch of tomatoes. Look I what I you. got. I got to plant them quickly. I'm so happy. What's you, it's all working now. <laughs> yeah, you well, got it all good. working now. Look that's at good, this. Man. Yeah, all by himself. Yeah. Hey, so, um, put a star in a star. Chart. Don't ask me. How and I, I saw did the that. first little little tomato. Did you? Yep. Just very. It's in its extreme infancy. Got it. Um. So I got the cage around it. Okay. And it's on the ledge of the patio. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to sugary yeah. uh, this year. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. And as far as the fountain, that's become Dana's job now. She loves cleaning the fountain. Does a much better job than I do. Every couple of weeks we drain it, clean it up a little bit, get the algae out of there. She's much better at it than I am. I said, this is your new job. The, the nursery and I are having a competition just between uh, me and the nursery. The nursery doesn't know about this competition, but... It's a competition. But you I'm, are the nursery. Well, but they're growing tomatoes at the nursery. Okay. And they're taking really good care of these tomatoes. We put them in 15-gallon buckets. They're trial tomatoes. Some just tomatoes we're going to grow out. And the plants look amazing. Big, green. Different varieties? Different varieties. They, they've they been doing a wonderful job with these tomatoes. On my end, though, I've done like a plant it and forget it kind of <laughs> it's just the experiment <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm not trimming them i did fertilize them but not really i'm my watering i think is a little bit more inconsistent they're still growing they're still blooming and i kind of feel like 
what's going to happen is because they've taken so much care of them, maybe they're not going to flower and produce as well. But the fact that I have let them grow naturally, I'm going to get better so production. That's, that's the experiment. To that's see. my experiment. We'll see. We're going to take a break uh, for our friends on Biz I like Talk that Radio. Excuse. I'd let them grow <laughs> naturally. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, that, that's good. I'm yeah. going to use that one. We're going to take a break. This is Garden America. Back after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. Stay with us. Well, happy Mother's Day weekend to you. I want to remind our uh, listeners on BizTalk Radio, this is last week's show when you hear reference to uh, Mother's Day, so thank you for tuning in. Thank you to Fertile Loam. Thank you to uh, Mosquito Dunks, uh, great sponsors of uh, this show, Garden America. Those on Facebook Live, questions, comments, we'd uh, love to see those. As Again, no guests today. It's just the three of us as uh, we continue, John. Why am I here? The reason I'm asking that is Paula says the Fallbrook Garden Club is having their annual plant sale from 9 to 2. I oh, you've got plenty of time when you get off the show. All right. Now, where is it being held, John? It is being held at the Fallbrook Historical Society. How far is that from your place? Great items and prices, Brian. How far is that from you? Well, if you're in Fallbrook, nothing's yeah, far from right. me. But Fallbrook is kind of... <laughs> Spread out. It takes to get from one end of Fallbrook to the other is probably 15 minutes. Unless you live in not, Duluth, not and then it's a half hour. Duluth is a, a community all to its own. The country. It's so far out there. I was. Um, Did I was, you find the name of that? I'm, oh, you're I'm looking share for it? Right it? Now. Okay, okay. I'm trying to find her comment so I can share the name of the. Um, Repellent that I was talking about, and it's by Natural Guard and Fertilome. It's, it's a the Fertilome lawn, product. It's the Lawn Shield Insect Repellent, and I'm going to go ahead and share that on that Facebook um, chat feed, on our feed. Okay. to yeah. a, With the link. website that talks about That was about Diana that was asking that. for that. Perfect. Um, yeah, it's a good product. I like it, and it smells good. It's got kind of like a cedar smell to it. That's good. Yeah. So, here we go. Got it. You know, Linda makes a, a point in Reading. She says, my plants are not ready for this. No. When you come from a, a cool, overcast, rainy weather, and then all of a sudden it's 90 degrees. It's a shock. It is a it's shock. A shock to the system. People are going to, I mean, uh, leaves are going to burn. John gives the analogy, you've been indoors all winter. You step oh, yeah. outside, all of a sudden, 90-degree weather, you're going to burn. Yeah. Well, no suntan lotion. I mean, you see it all the time. People on vacations going to those tropical places, some from Canada. Right. Oh, boy. <laughs> New Yorkers going to Florida. Yeah. So, John. Yes, sir. Tell us about Shreveport and your your big adventure last weekend with the the Rose Society. It was fun. You know, we, we uh, I I think I told you the bus tour visited Nekatesh. By the way, the... the Nekatesh Express? The, um, Sorry. What was it we saw? The Steel Magnolia House. Right. And you got the, a picture on your phone. Of Nekatesh. Yeah, of the Steel Magnolia House in Nekatesh. I think my wife really liked that that um, movie. Yeah. Did you ever see it? Steel Magnolias? Uh, Who was in it? A lot of those old people. Is that the one where <laughs> yeah. Julia Roberts dies? Could be. Yeah. I don't know, though. Or I, mean, I'm, I can't remember if I'm thinking fried green tomatoes or steel magnolias. I can't remember. It's all that Southern stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is, right? <laughs> the same movie. <laughs> the same. And um, is, the thing I was going to mention about the American Rose Society's headquarters is if you're in Shreveport, it's it's like uh, probably a half hour away just to get to that, maybe even an hour. <laughs> you think it's there in Shreveport, but where the – headquarters is there's nothing around it i told tiger that they built it in the middle of a pine forest 
And when they were first there, I mean, nothing would grow because it was really literally in the middle of the forest. So they've had to cut down a lot of logging going on over there. But now they've got the infrastructure down, the hardscaping is in, and it's really beautiful. And one of the roses that we we uh, had in the auction there and is introduced this year for the first time is a rose called Never Forget. And it was developed in France with the American Rose Society as a reminder of uh, world the, the veterans September that 11th. died in November. No, November. Oh. Uh, oh, world no. War One. Oh, that's right. So the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier mm-hmm. yeah. uh, is going to have one of these Never Forget Gardens. And they're going to be planting them all over the world and certainly all over the country. It was bred by Fabien Duché and his great, great uncle was uh, Joseph uh, Pernet Duché, and he was the one who developed the Pernetianas. Uh, Fabien Duché? Fabien. 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 Not like the singer Fabian. <laughs> no, it's Fabien. It's not like Stabien, but uh, Fabien. Fabien, du- <laughs> Fabien Duché. Yeah. That's a great name. Yeah. That is kind of yeah, a good name. If you're going to be an actor, that's your name, Fabien Duché. <laughs> but his motivation was that his... Uh, great great uncle had two sons that were killed in World War One, mm-hmm. and so that's I th- never forget. So never forget. And I think there's two roses, as I recall, that came out in uh, like the nineteen nineteen seventeen nineteen twenty something like that. Uh, one is mm-hmm. a souvenir du Claudius Pernet, and the other one was uh, whatever his other son's name was. But anyway, a souvenir is the French word for in memory of, um, which is where our word souvenir comes souvenir, from, yeah. uh, reminder of. So it's a reminder of, of those two sons. But anyway, this is a really nice shrub rose, and and I'm going to put it on the side of my house because I'm where Tiger's doing the landscaping. I have this one bed that uh, I started to do, and uh, I'm going to put a few roses in there, but not as a rose garden, just mainly as shrubs. And I think this is going to be Fill perfect for that area. Right now, it's it, I I think it's still available, but I'm not sure. If you go to Heirloom Roses, uh, they're the ones who are introducing it into the U.S. Okay. That's fun. Right. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Very and, nice. Uh, got to meet a lot of rose people, people I had talked to and never met um, or emailed. And you finally meet him in person. There was uh, one gentleman, Jerry Dreyer, who used to live in uh, Iowa. And I'm not really sure how we originally got involved, but there's a gentleman in Iowa called Cliff Godfrey who's in his 80s and can't take care of his miniature roses anymore, but he's got some of the last in the world of these miniatures. And so Jerry uh, had them all propagated and sent us... uh, uh, starts of those roses so we could keep them alive. Well, that's very timely considering the newsletter. Yeah, well, and that's where have part, all the miniature roses gone? Yeah, that's part yeah. of the reason. Yeah. You, you can't find roses, miniature roses anymore because all the miniature rose companies are out of business. And there used to be lots of them. Well, does that just mean nobody wanted them anymore? So supply and demand is not worth I know, even We've talked them? about this before, yeah. but in the mid-1800s, there were miniature roses called Lorenzianas. And there were hundreds of them, and virtually everyone disappeared. There's maybe, out of the hundreds, there's maybe less than a handful that still exist. And it's because those roses are smaller that they can't adapt to, to the climate on their own. Like, if you go to, uh, we've talked about if you go to cemeteries or ghost towns, you'll yeah. still see large right. roses growing there, right. but not miniatures. Yeah, and that's what's happening with miniatures now, that these small nurseries have gone out of business. Small miniature small nurseries. Miniature, I caught yeah. that. Yeah, that was good. They, um, uh, no one else is growing them. So it used, I think it, part of it uh, happened during the last Great Recession. A lot of rose nurseries went out of business, and the miniature rose nurseries especially, because they, for some reason they always sold them at very low prices, and it just wasn't enough to just to sustain the companies during that time period. Hmm. So maybe yeah. maybe somebody could open up a miniature well, yeah, rose nursery. Bring, bring the miniature rose back. It's funny because people do always assume smaller plants with lower prices, right, John? Yeah. And 
the problem though with smaller plants and i don't i don't necessarily know if this is true for miniature but you know we talk about dwarf conifers and right. things like that they take a lot longer to grow right so they're more expensive you know and so people think oh it's a small little four inch pine it must be cheap and then they right. see it for 25 dollars. right but they don't realize that it took how long eight to get years that, to yeah, get that little get four inch pine today. to grow yeah. and so you know with miniature roses i don't think they're that slow but they definitely they're pretty are slow though they definitely are slower than because there's also micro mini oh, roses goodness. yeah and there's a rose uh, that ralph moore bred called little chief and it would fill out a uh, one gallon can, and that's about as big that's as this the, thing gets. And it takes its lifespan to do right. That. Yeah. But there's a rose grower in uh, Northern California who uh, is a breeder, and he asked if I could get him cuttings. And I said, it's "Yeah, like two, that's like the whole plant." <laughs> you know, <I> eventually, <laughs> you know, cuttings. like right now, it's in full bloom, but it's it still just barely fills a one gallon <laughs> can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny. It's kind of like I'm I'm growing out all these plumerias, and I'm just waiting for them to branch off so I can start getting cuttings from plumerias because that's part of the reason why I have them is I want to be able to kind right. of propagate them. Right. And, um, you know, they don't always branch out as quickly as you would think, so you got to wait years and years for them to branch out. It is break time again. We have uh, one more segment uh, as far as our number one is concerned for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. Do stay with us. Uh, those on Facebook Live, uh a lot of chit-chat back and forth with the people watching our show on Facebook. That's fine. It doesn't always have to be us that you're asking questions or comments, uh, too. So with that in mind, we'll take a break. But if you have something in mind, let us know here on Garden America. Hey, hey, welcome back to the show. Hope you had a good break. Those on BizTalk Radio, those on Facebook Live, thank you so much. And again, uh, pertaining to BizTalk Radio, this is the final segment of our number one news coming up top of the hour. We come back at six minutes after. Hopefully you can uh, catch both hours. If not, many ways to listen to us. Google, uh, Pandora, various streaming and digital. Uh, we've got uh, Alexa who will play our shows. Also our uh, YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show. And, of course, our website, GardenAmerica.com. Go to our website, GardenAmerica.com. But, again, many ways to listen to the show, John. Never an excuse anymore. Tired no. of your excuses. Tired of your excuses. <laughs> hey, um, Tanya wants to see before and after pictures when Tiger's done landscaping at my house. Did you take some before pictures? No. <laughs> uh, hurry before well, we Well, you could take it now. It's still pretty raw. It is. Well, I'll tell you, the is. hillside, which is his biggest challenge as far as I'm concerned, yeah. is pretty raw and i can take some yeah. pictures when i get home yeah you really should yeah if nothing else to use as proof in court <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you ever have trouble with uh you know because being in a uh service business like tiger is you know dealing with the public uh, of course you've got to have the right temperament for it but do you ever have people that get upset with you or complain about anything oh definitely because kind of like what we we're talking about with the Dwarf conifers, just expectations of people. And as an example, I'm actually dealing with a, a woman right now. She's getting she's getting her home ready for an event. Okay, this event is happening late summer, but you have to get ready now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're working with her on bringing in tens of thousands of dollars in plants. And this is a lot of plants. It's not cheap. It's you know she's by no means an event at her house. Yeah. Yeah. So these plants aren't going to stay there? They're going to stay there, okay. but it's just in getting it all right. prepped. You know, the, the, the landscape is old, and she wants to spruce it up. And so we're just incorporating some new stuff. We're redoing some areas. And it's a it's a big yard. I, I don't know exactly, but I would say that the whole yard is probably about an acre fully landscaped. Okay? So $10,000 of, of planting and plants and things is a good amount of money but it's it's for an acre not that much it's really not that much to really when, try to stretch it out and then when i i mean i get good plants and when i drop in a five gallon 
you know, uh, hydrangea, it's what a foot and right. a half tall by a foot and a half wide. Yeah. When you actually put it in the ground, it shrinks. It doesn't look that big. Right. Well, people right. don't realize what things are going to grow like. If you if you made the landscape look like it's finished, and then and within a year it's or two, grow into each you'd other. be digging things out, yeah. cutting them down. Things right. would be dying. Right. Yeah. So I'm. I've told her already because I've already got this feeling from her. Like I'm like you need to know what you're getting. You know, so I was like, I told her the exact plant list. I'm like, do your research on the plants. Make sure they're going to be what you want. I go, come to the nursery. We'll show you the plants you're going to get. So that way when we show up the day of, you're right. not looking at it like this isn't a lot of stuff. Right. Um, because like what you were saying, John, I think she has this expectation of what she's getting. Right. And it, I know for a fact it's not what she's, she's getting. expecting a finished magazine cover exactly. backyard. And, and what I, and, she's going to have in about five years, right? Yeah. But yeah. that's not going to be in time for her party. It'll be. Or her get together. It'll whatever. be in enough. The, the yard will look. Right. We, we have enough time to make it look better than what it does now. You know, and she is starting off good in that sense of she's not waiting until the week before or something. But um, nonetheless, you know, to John's answer about, yeah. you know, people's expectations versus what they get. Um, and then the other thing that we run into from a company standpoint is, so what we'll do is we'll install a landscape, um, you know, and then we want to make sure it's all set up and ready to go for them. But a month or two from now, you know, we're not around, you know, uh, irrigation systems need to be adjusted. You still need to go out and check on the plants as they're growing maybe once a week to make sure they're getting watered, you know, little things like that. And some people will will come back to us and be like, oh, well, you know, yeah, it's been in there for six months and we're still running it on the same irrigation cycle that you set it at. I'm like, we set that for new plants. It was getting water like daily. Now you're overwatering all those very well established plants. So you have to think past her thoughts. Knowing how she is, you have to be two or three steps ahead of her and go, yeah, I knew knew you were going to wonder about (laughs) that. I knew this is what was going to concern you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, if you've been in business long enough, you can just tell when you meet someone, yeah. okay, this is going to be trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and I have to communicate on a, a differently than I would with other people. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, but communication is the key to it. You just have to let people know. And Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> hey, you know what I saw at Home Depot? What? Do you remember um, – we were talking about variegated philodendrons and how expensive oh. they were, and oh. they went up to, oh, what, yeah. like $10,000 yep. yep. for a plant. And I think Pink Princess was, I think they were in hundreds of dollars, right? Yeah. Even maybe like uh, 1200 Is these the split leaf? Uh... No, no, this is the one with the hot pink leaves. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, splashes in there. Anyway, they had Pink Princess <laughs> philodendrons. In six inch pots. Wow. That were I think they were like twenty five bucks or something. Wow. They were they, really they didn't even know what they had. Huh? Yeah. Well, I'm where? sure they knew what well, they but had. I'm just but saying like I this mean, is where again? Home, Home Depot. Depot. Wow. Yeah, what hmm. they do, they work with brokers. And so these brokers just throw mixes of plants together, and then they just distribute them. So some grower hmm. obviously went big on the pink princess and Maybe they were slow to sell them for their full markup that they wanted to, so then they just threw them into the mix with twenty five bucks. Because that's what happens. Fifteen with- years ago, a four inch plant you could probably buy at a garden center for like three ninety nine, yeah, or something like that. Then they went up online to well over a thousand dollars if you could get one. Right, but now now they'll be back to three ninety nine. <laughs> well. Twenty twenty four ninety nine is the new three ninety nine. That is true. That <laughs> yeah, is the right. old three ninety nine. But you know who's um, infamous for doing that too is um, Altman's. Altman's produces their succulents. Great, mm-hmm. great grower. I mean, we've had people from Altman's on long time, but again, they just grow thousands and thousands of varieties of succulents, and then they put those just into mixes that right. they ship. So sometimes you're perusing through the uh, collection there, you're like. Wait a minute. This is a really this rare. Is, this is a really rare succulent, yeah. you know, in the just basic mix with everything else there. It's the or, same price as the one next to it that's been spray painted and had a <laughs> right. straw flower glued on it. 
Oh, they're the worst. We are getting to the end of this segment uh, for our friends on Biz Talk Radio, which means news coming up top of the hour. We're going to keep Tiger happy. He's in a good mood this morning. So is John. I am too, for that matter. So with that in mind, we're going to take a break for Biz Talk Radio news coming up. We're back at six minutes after. And then hour number two here on Garden America. Do stay with us. Those on Facebook Live, it's going to be a much quicker break. So uh, stick around. A lot happening on Garden America. <laughs> Welcome to Garden America. You know, John, I almost said Garden Compass. Holy wow, that moly. Was a while ago. Where's your mind I going? I just, the brain really quickly went, comp- no, not Compass, America. Garden America. If you are just joining us, this is our number two. Those on Biz Talk Radio. I'm the those one on that Facebook used to Live. do that all the time. Who's that? I used to do that yeah, all the time. Remember garden, when we switched names? Garden Compass. Garden Compass. We'll garden point Life. You, remember, we'll point what, you in the right direction. West Coast Garden Line. Yeah. Um, well, somebody who's just joining us now is Rick. Good morning, Rick. See, people join us all the time. Yeah. Right? Some people come, some people go. Some are here for the entire show. Others just check in now and then. We hit a sore spot with Tanya. She said, don't even get me started on spray-painted plants uh, and straw flowers. <laughs> yeah, right? You know, they must sell because of the fact they're still doing them. Hey, and, and if there's anybody listening that that's their plant of choice, hey, we're, we all have our, you know, taste that, Mm-hmm. We we you know you, you you like or you don't like it, but that is something so funny, right? When you walk in and you see spray painted orchids, spray painted succulents, or during, died, yeah. you know, like the blue orchid has died. Died right? exactly. <clears throat> and how do they dye that? Do they dye it through the roots, or do you think they dye the flower? No, they dye it through the roots. They dye it through the roots, right? And then if it if those blooms fade and uh, uh, you get a out. new stem coming out, it'll be white. Yeah. So it doesn't hurt so the plant. What did what did what did you used to do that with in elementary school? Like you used to put like a piece of celery or something, and it would wick up the red dye or some you know different things like mm. that. Little little garden science project. Yeah, thing. yeah. I went to a different school. I don't remember. The... <laughs> uh, John had a one room schoolhouse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carla says she remembers buying miniature roses from Pixie Treasures in Placentia, California. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember for sure, but I think that was Lauren Chapin's nursery. Lauren Chapin, the actress? (laughs) No. You know who Lauren (laughs) Chapin is, don't you? No. She was on Father Knows Best. She was the youngest daughter. Right. Eleanor Donahue, Billy Gray, and Lauren Chapin. Was that Kitten? Kitten. And then the older one was Princess. (laughs) Tiger, this is... Whoa. Way back. Jane Wyatt, Robert Young. Wow. This is the 50s. Radio into TV. But anyway, John. Tiger's hearing blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Black and white. So, yeah. so um, whoever's nursery it was was a breeder of miniature roses, too. And a lot of those roses are extinct. So there's certain breeders. You know, in Chula Vista was D. Bennett's nursery. Pix- uh, what was that called? Uh, D. Bennett was, oh, my gosh. Can't remember. Don't know. Just went nuts. Now I have pixie pixie treasures in my head. Yeah. My head. Did you guys see any comments of anybody saying I Tiny have Petals ro- Nursery? Who, what, what's the name? Tiny Petals in Chula Vista. Anybody on Facebook say we have miniature roses? Like, yes. A lot of people think, say yeah. they have miniature roses. I mean, so they're still around. You know, it's so just, here's the thing. Hang yeah. on to them. Yeah. yeah, it's just different varieties yeah. that are becoming extinct. Micro miniatures for sure. One of the things I was um, talking to. Uh, Linda Clark, who does the rose shows for San Diego, I uh, was opening a new category for a one-gallon oh, yeah. potted plant. Remember you were saying that, but using a micro mini rose, yeah. because if you you can't take a cutting, if you yeah, if you <laughs> cut a, a little piece of a micro it's, mini and like, stick it in a vase, it's it looks like, like a piece of weed. Yeah, you uh, can't even uh, can't, solace or spurs. You, you can't judge that. Up. But if you had a nice plant in full bloom. And then that that's one way of getting people to grow 
in preserving some of the micro minis. I like I like John's also new introduction at the last Rose show that we went to up there in um, Oceanside. Was it yeah, Oceanside? yeah, it was Oceanside. And, um, the yeah, it hips. was uh, <laughs> the hips. <laughs> I John, thought that was John, good. It was. It was good. Because, I won the trophy. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, create your own criteria. Yeah, yeah. You win the trophy. Create your own category. <laughs> right. Exactly. And be the winner. Right. Um, but it is funny because, to some degree, <clears throat> rose hips for a rose breeder are probably one of the most important things for a breeder to know that they're going to get good, like good production out of. Right. You know, if you have. If you have a rose that can produce good seeds, then that's going to be really important for you to be able Speaking to kind of Speaking of breed. seeds, how are your seeds doing? Good. I, they, any any buds yet? No, no, no buds on mine. Any buds on yours? You're no. still alive? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had, while I was in Shreveport, I had snails crawl up and eat a whole bunch of my <laughs> seedlings. While oh, you were gosh. gone. Yeah. Can you see oh. the snails now? Yeah. When's he leaving? Well, you know, yeah. they He's take a long tomorrow. time to get there, so I was gone a week. Yeah, well, they had exactly. to plan it. They knew he was yeah. leaving. Hey, Jan up in Brentwood uh, makes a good point that probably the most famous breeder of miniature roses today is Dave Bang, and mm-hmm. he's he's uh, famous for his striped roses and exhibitions uh, form. Uh, I would say most of his roses are mini floras rather than true miniatures, but he does have some minis. Uh, but he's the only one breeding, and those are being sold at K&M Nursery in Mississippi. So those roses are still available, and K&M is probably the best source for miniatures overall. So I, I think I might have put a link in the newsletter to K&M Nursery. I'm pretty sure that I did. Mississippi. Yeah, okay. and, and some long name that begins with a B. Oh, it's not like oh. any city or town we'd know? No. Like Tupelo or no. Jackson? No. or Tupelo. Mississippi. <laughs> That's where Elvis was born. Really? Yeah, ni- January 1935. Really? Uh-huh. Tupelo, Tupelo, Mississippi. Mississippi huh? Tupelo, yeah. Look at that. You have a lot of knowledge you're gaining today. I am. On the way in with uh, Footloose and Kenny Loggins. Geography. And, and uh, Tupelo and Elvis. Yeah. Tupelos are trees. Did you know that? Yeah. Tupelo oh, I thought tree. it was an Indian name. It's yeah. a tree? Yeah. Like a Tupelo tree? It's, it's a, um, well, John knows more I mean, than I, but I had I've heard never that. Heard, I've never heard of this tree. Is, is, I, I'm assuming it's a tree that doesn't grow here. It doesn't. Not in San yeah. Diego. Yeah. Not, so a it tupelo needs a little, tree. Yeah. A tupelo is... Is it a pine tree? Is It like might a, be... I was going to say Nissa sylvatica, but that's just popping into my head. It could be... That could be a black gum or something. Okay. But I can... Tiger, I guess Tiger's like asking what it, what it looks like. Yeah, what's does it what's look the closest, like a eucalyptus? Yeah. Does what's the closest like tree to uh, compare it with? Great myrtle? What is it well... Like? I'd look it up, but I'm afraid I'm going to lose my <laughs> yeah, feet. So, so Tiger's going to look it up, look and look then up. he's going to put the link on our Facebook page yes, I will. so people can see a picture of a Tupelo tree. Right. Um, Kathy in San Diego points out that another source for miniature roses is Burlington Rose Nursery. Mm-hmm. And um, our friend Burling used to be the breeder for – or not the breeder, the uh, uh, – Propagator for Ralph Moore, uh, Sequoia Nursery, and she's up there in Visalia. Um, the only thing ordering from her is her website is not user friendly. So if you want to order miniature roses from her, you have to email her, which you can find the email on her website at Burlington Roses, and she will mail you an availability. I thought you were saying that's her URL, not friendlywebsite.com. <laughs> Not, not friendly website dot com it or dot org be. could be, but anyway, um, yeah, those are are two great sources right now, and and I can't think of any other sources offhand. You know, occasionally they'll pop up. Heirloom Roses has a few minis, but uh, the the best overall selections are going to be K and M and in Burlington Roses. So Tiger that, has that, posted the Tupelo tree. That is a pretty tree. That is a very pretty tree. So what's the? Let me see. Show me your phone real quick. Um, here I'll get a picture. Yeah, Bill. Bill and Elaine point out that it's Buckatuna, Mississippi. Yeah, that's beautiful, right? Right. Look at that. What's so, the name of it? Um, Nysa. Yeah, Nysa. it was Nysa Silver. John was right. right. Yeah. So it's how about that it's, for a tree I never used? It's the equivalent to our liquid amber. 
you know, where it's right. a deciduous tree. I think it green. has good fall color. Too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it like, does. Well, look oh, at yeah. it. Green, yeah. green, great foliage in the spring and summer, and then very vibrant reds and yellows and oranges, obviously, into the fall and winter. But I, I just love how it's also, and obviously, I'm sure these are pruned, but it's just lacy also. It's very well layered mm-hmm. in a tree. Um, it doesn't get super crazy big, you know, as well. So that's a good little tree. That's and it can cupolo. growing uh-huh. down there. It sure can take some weather. Oh, it's got to. Yeah, it, they they do show a few of them like near rivers and stuff. So it's probably like one of those high water need trees as well. Any place that you can grow shag bark hickories, <laughs> you can grow tupelos. <laughs> what is a shag bark hickory? Oh. Brian, Brian can tell you about shag bark hickories. I can, well, I can, no, never mind that. See, that joke <laughs> came to mind really quick, and I, I used the John Bagnasco filter. Oh, well done. So we're going to take a break uh, until the next segment, which is going to be very quickly because those on BizTalk Radio, you're going to hear some fine sponsors, including Mosquito Dunks and Fertilome. Those on Facebook Live, it's going to be a very quick break. So we have one, two, three segments to go on this Mother's Day weekend. Do stay with us. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox here on Garden America. Welcome back from uh, your break on BizTalk Radio. Those on Facebook Live, questions, comments, going in a few different directions this morning, which is always a lot of fun, from uh, miniature roses to uh, some uh, TV trivia to uh, Tupelo trees and everything in between. Yeah. Everything in between. And that's because I mentioned John couldn't remember the name of the uh, town in Mississippi. I mentioned Jackson and Tupelo. And Tiger said, Tupelo? What is Tupelo? Tupelo trees and Elvis Presley. Yeah. I was thinking that was some kind of because you know down in in the East Coast and the Midwest a lot of Indian names. They, you oh, know, absolutely. Like, like we have a lot of Spanish, Mexican, mm-hmm. Indian names here, but over there it's all Indian. Michigan had a lot outside oh, of Detroit it was yeah. uh, Tecumseh, Michigan, and Those, Pontiac. And, his uh, Michigan yeah. was Chief Pontiac. Well, yeah, and look yeah. at all the colleges. Yeah, you know, no, it, they're really hard to pronounce. I feel like they're more. And it's obviously because they live there, they could probably easily do it. But it it seems harder to pronounce those words and um, unless you than, live than we have here. Like people get confused with La Jolla, they call it La Jolla because it starts with a J. Of course, here. you know when when but, we send out um, commercial copy to be produced outside of the market, we have to make sure we tell them like H O Y Hoya Y A. That's La Jolla, not La Jolla, because yeah. the L's are Ya. Yeah. After yeah. we had moved to California, my wife was communicating with her parents in Michigan and <clears throat> told them that when they came to visit us, we were going to take them to La Jolla. And she built it up and, you know, this restaurant, we were, I think we went to the one Mexican restaurant that was really famous. Oh, I, Alfonso's? Yeah, Alfonso's. Uh-huh. So we told them all about this and there was going to be a harbor and seals and stuff like that. So she built it up and, by the, and they came out here and we took them to La Jolla and we had lunch and everything. And a couple days later, my uh, stepmother-in-law goes, well, are you ever going to take us to La Jolla? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's funny because you kept saying La Jolla. Yeah, we so kept saying La Jolla. And they thought- Actually, I, I, I messed that up. If I can back up a little bit, pretend I didn't <laughs> say anything. Your story? <laughs> she said, are you ever going to take us to La Jolla? Right. Because she had seen the signs when we went there, La Jolla. Okay. Well, that's like... Uh- the Georgetown Hoyas. Would have been a better story, story if I would have said it correctly. The, the Georgetown first time. Hoyas, right? The college team, H O Y. Well, Hoyas. Hoya, Hoyas. Right. right. And Hoyas are great climbing vines. Yeah. yeah. Tupelo and Hoyas. All <laughs> in one show. Rarely <laughs> do we ever talk about the two of them together. <laughs> this might be a first. Have. I think this I is a say, first. I don't think we've ever talked about Tupelo and Hoyas in the same conversation. Tupelo and Carla, honey. yeah, Carla points out that Tupelo honey's the best, and it's hard to find. Oh, it, they actually make a honey out of the Tupelo tree? Not out of the tree. I mean, of out the, of the sap? The, you mean, that's what honey is, right? <laughs> what do they make? Wait a minute. <laughs> no, out of the bees. It's, will you explain to him about the bees? <laughs> the birds and the bees? Right. right. Well, when I was thinking Daddy Bee loves the mommy bee very much. <laughs> I was thinking about Do it about during the syrup. break. Sorry. Sorry. But right, it's from the flowers of the Tupelo that the 
the bees will be uh, around that time and make Tupelo honey. But by the way, do you have a lot of bees now? Because we do. They've like come back in full force. Ours, ours yeah. have been swarming in San Diego. Yeah, yeah, they've been swarming. Which is good production. Um, you saw that picture I took a few weeks ago. I took a little micro macro picture yeah. of of a bee, and he just what I you know I have no fear of walking in and amongst them because they're busy. They don't you know they're not going to stay. Was it rock well, room that you stabbed the doobie them <laughs> the doobies and the don't bees? That was uh, that. That was uh, romper oh, room. Yeah, that's what I said. Romper, romper room. room. Yeah. yeah, doobies and dompies. Yeah, right. <laughs> you ever hear romper room? No. <laughs> You're more of a Fred Rogers guy, aren't you, Mister Rogers? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, see. Mr. There Rogers we go. Is. I never. I don't think I've ever ever seen a Mister Rogers. Really? Yeah. You need to watch the opening. Serious. You really do. Yeah. I'll do that. I watched a couple of Pee Wee Hermans. <laughs> <laughs> Pee Wee's Playhouse. Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. I thought I would never let my kids watch. Yes, yeah, so. exactly. Very, very different, and maybe a little bit ahead of his time. Yeah. Um, did you see his movie? Yep. Oh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Pee-wee's Big Adventure and Pee Wee's Big Top. Yeah. Yeah. Tell Not bad. Marge, Marge sent you. Dancing to Tequila on the Bar. Yep. With the motorcycle gang. Yeah. <laughs> motor- that was beautiful. Okay. Now we Lenore have says, yeah, we've Lenore says no bees. No and bees. I was just going to chime in that I haven't noticed a lot lately at my house, and I would think with everything coming into bloom, there lot. were a lot of them uh, around January. You know, that anisodontia you gave me, I told you how it was just loaded with bees. But I, I haven't noticed a lot lately. Not sure why. Yeah, we have a lot you, of them. You're, Maybe it's because I'm focused on snails. Your hillsides, the ceanothus is starting to wrap up now, right? Because right. It was all purple absolutely gorgeous for right. a while but now it's kind of done so maybe that's that was probably a big bee attractor at the time and now maybe it, there's less could of be it. we used to that have beehives on in. the property i'm not sure where they went yeah maybe maybe the salvies though will be starting uh, shannon saw uh at home depot yesterday a really dark dark blue salvia cool and she she wants it on our hillside <laughs> That, and, and I on, said, in the middle of the rock. <laughs> yeah, and I said that's what exactly what I told her. <laughs> they don't grow in rocks. Yeah, exactly. And I said, you know, we can, I can get those anywhere. She says, no, I want these dark blue ones. I said, y- you can get dark blue. You can get whatever you want. If we can put a hole in the ground, we can put one in. But how many hydrangeas does she want you to plant? I don't what know, do we want, have? Like twenty. Twenty. Yeah, because that's her favorite. She Ten, twenty. That. Yeah, mixing the varieties mm-hmm. too. Yeah. I pl- I've planted three already, uh, but I'm doing the landscape around one area of the house because it has to all be jackhammered. And I thought it would <laughs> save Tiger the trouble of the jackhammer. Uh, and you, I'm have, ho- you have your own jackhammer. Yeah. yeah. Where he lives, he has to have. That's part of his digging. Right. Yes. Right. The, er- the area I just planted on roses where you put the drip, uh, that was really nice avocado soil. Yeah. And I didn't need a jackhammer at all. I mean, you could almost use a spoon to dig in it. It's so loose. Uh, but the roses are just thriving there. Uh, but the other area that uh, is uh, that you need the jackhammer for, I'm I'm afraid that some of the roots are going to rot if it gets too much water on different plants there. So I, Tiger's advice was just dig huge holes, and then the water will kind of drain away different areas so we'll see what happens once the roots get in there they do break it up the roots and the soil you know i mean he's brought in some great um compost soil to already add to the place already the plants once they start growing in there but i mean you're 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 starting on bare rock and so many different areas of your yard that you the only thing you can do is just time you know just time and invest in amendments I know what you just read. <laughs> yeah, Dana's comment. Yes, we have a hydrangea for Shannon. <laughs> Brian will bring it in next week. <laughs> no, it's looking really good. It's got. It's getting ready to bloom. It's in very good shape. The leaves are nice. Is it an old one? Green. You had it from last year. Oh, five, six, eight years ago. Do you know hydrangeas are really expensive? Yeah. I mean, if you go to buy them online, there there's some sites. I think Hydrangea Plus is a company that's got. Like close to a hundred different varieties, but they're fifty bucks a piece. Wow! Oh, mine's good size. Well, I've had it for long, maybe close to not ten years, but within the last decade. Do you cut it back? Every yes, 
Yes, absolutely. And I, I've taken it now from the patio along the walkway now. Oh. I'm giving my more room in the you patio now. Say you gave him more room, huh? Mm-hmm. Everything more room. You and know, they to- they have ever-blooming hydrangeas now, right? Like endless summer, and then there's a... What I'm you- sorry. I just saw the clock. We have to take a break. Oh, well, then I'll just wait till after the break. And what were we talking about? Hydrangeas. Okay. So we can remember what to talk about. When we come back from this break, on your weekend, Mother's Day weekend, on Garden America. <laughs> All righty, back here on Garden America, Biz Talk Radio. Just before the break, we're, we're talking, talking about, about hydrangeas. Reblooming hydrangeas. Reblooming hydrangeas. Because hydrangeas were all once blooming. Now they've been bred to rebloom. And, um, oh, when I was going to talk about pruning them, the once blooming hydrangeas, the ones that are blooming now, you need to cut those back after they're done blooming and let the new growth come out because they bloom on your old wood. So if you wait till spring to cut those back, then you're cutting off all the flowers. And uh, that's one of the problems in cold areas of the country because they will get die back when, yeah. it's, when it's in the winter, right? right. And, it, and then no you, flowers. And you know, never get any flowers. Yeah. So also planted that one hydrangea, um, what's it called? Incredible. The one that had that funky flower? That you, did, did you bring it in here? No, no. That was... Uh, Princess Diana. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, this is one that has a flower the size of a basketball, Ooh. but it's not a macrophylla type. It's the uh, the other type, those big, tall, little more. Like the woody ones? Yeah, I'm trying to th- yeah, think of the name of it. Anyway, they don't do as well in San Diego. Right. So I planted this one where it gets some sun. They need more sun than regular hydrangeas, but then again, if it gets too hot where I am, it's <laughs> yeah. not good. Probably be better for you. And I dug a hole and planted my magic dogwood, and it looks like it's dying. Oh, no. (laughs) No. But How long has it been in the ground? Almost three weeks now. It's just getting rooted. It's fine. It looks worse every every day. Every day. day. That's the worst. Why? What do you think? I don't know. It wasn't happy being moved out into the sun. Well, yeah, that is true. Uh, Tiger's people were filling the dirt in the beds, and it was in part shade, but it hasn't been that hot yet, so I, I don't know what, what's going on with that. How's your, um, speaking of large uh, blooms on your hydrangea, how about the large fruit on your avocado? You ordered that one avocado that was supposed to get an avocado like the size of a cantaloupe or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that experiment and you were You were a little bit iffy on that one. Oh, you're talking about the Avozilla. 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 That's what it was. That one I'm still skeptical on. <laughs> but I did How's get, the plant doing, though? Uh, I'm skeptical. Yeah, that's what you right? Yeah. yeah, both ways. Not as well as all the grafted ones, yeah. so I'm not sure. I thought at first you were talking about Marcus Pumpkin. Oh. Which is another huge right. a West Indian type, but, no, but hardy. Avozilla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm skeptical. I'm trying to figure out where to plant those. I got to make sure I get water to them, and I really need you to come by and because uh, it's not that long before I go to Belgium. Ah, yeah. And I need to make sure that everything's alive when I come back. Perfect. All right. Because I'm going to hold you responsible for everyone that's not alive. It sounds good. Da- Dana and Brian are going to stay up there at your house, right? Is Shannon going to be there? Shannon, yes, she'll be there. <laughs> yeah, I think we can. Yeah. You'll be gone. Yeah, exactly. You guys will have fun. You can pull weeds, plant anything you want. I've got a whole bunch of plants. You know what? Uh, uh, I'm a good waterer. You want you want me to water? I really need water to, watering done. I planted. Uh, I didn't plant it yet, but I at the Huntington sale, I bought an ice cream bean tree. Have you uh, seen any think, of those? Did, I think you did. You you didn't bring it in with no. your Huntington. Loop. No, no, no. I I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, uh, an ice cream bee, bean tree, uh, Inga, is that the genus? It produces uh, two to three foot pods. It's a legume, but it's a tree. And when you, so you know what a, a huge bean pod yeah. would look like. When you open it up, it's got a pulp in it that tastes like vanilla ice cream. Like the is vanilla the, bean. 
is the pod like yeah those... you said grit what's it called ice cream bean yeah well the vanilla beans vanilla ice cream it's completely different no but bean the vanilla bean and you said it smells like ice cream that's no the it tastes like vanilla ice cream so you don't see my comparison to the vanilla bean <laughs> no because that's an orchid and it, you don't eat the pods <laughs> Not not in anywhere near the direction oh, I was going. Tiger I, knows what I'm talking I, about. I, I get where you're coming from, yeah. but then it's funny because I also see where John is saying it's two, nothing. Two different directions. Two different things, yeah. but the, it is... We're yeah. not on the same wavelength at all, right? Normally, now, we, we, is, sometimes we, we skew off the grid a this, little bit. This ice cream bean, it, do you know cassia pods? Those long... Yeah. That, is it like that? Yeah, except longer. So, it, so like, but long, narrow. Right. Yeah. Because I'm envisioning this giant bean pod with you know, dryers yeah, ex- <laughs> written on the no, side no, of no, it no, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly see that's no. where, t- where brian's going yeah, yeah no i'm i'm envisioning like a giant bean pod in this yeah you know, like, like jack a, and like the beanstalk bean, yeah that'd be kind of crazy right so i wasn't going there at all he took it in a third direction yeah it's a fast growing tree i i don't know if i've seen them planted a lot though yeah <laughs> same with magic dogwoods well, Magic Dogwoods, yeah. Full sun? It's full sun. Full sun now. Is it, are they supposed to take full sun? The what? Magic Dogwoods. Your Magic Dogwoods. Oh, dog. no. that's Now it's in a sh- partly oh. shaded area up near the house. I dug a hole, and then Shannon came out and said, that's too close to the walkway. You have to move it over there. So <laughs> I like, moved Don't it. worry. Don't worry. It's not going to live for very long. Yeah, Shannon. don't worry. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's what I said. You know, you can always cut it down. You can always prune it. Yeah. I think it's okay where it is. Oh, you know what I forgot to add to the plant list of things you got, if you have one. I mean, I can always get one somewhere as an Eden climbing rose. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll look. Yeah. It's something you might have at the nursery. Even. Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. It's kind of a common one that we have. That, yeah. yeah. I just I like thought of a cartoon rose. for climbing roses. You did? I wish I could draw. I can't draw. Chat GPT draw, man. What's that? Just, just I told you, go on to the internet and you can just use those AI things and they'll draw pictures for you. Really? Yeah. I, I could resume I my you. my comics. My cousin that created a book and she had yeah. all of the illustrations done. Told us a, a couple weeks ago by about AI. this. So you just type in what you want it to. Ex- yeah. I want to. There's a whole system, right? Like the first word is the main focus of the picture. And then you kind of go from there, and then you... Is it like you pay for the service, like Pick Monkey? Yeah. This one, my cousin did, and she said, I don't remember what it was, like 15 bucks, and she got all these pictures. Yeah. I've got all these... Don't you remember that conversation you were even, you were even, you even talking said, about? I yeah. should redo my comics. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but, I, but the AI... But now, the, hey, for, for someone who doesn't remember yesterday, come on. It's... The hard part for you is going to be because they're jokes. You're going to have to think outside of the joke to create the image, right? Like you can't write the joke and then it would create. The well, image. no, I would write the the image first. Well, no, but 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 what I'm saying though is that's gonna there's gonna be some um, technique in how you want that image which, to come across. Which you have to teach yourself once you get the program, right? Because instructions do not exist anymore. Yeah. On anything. No. Nothing. You want to, instructions? YouTube. Yeah. Okay. And then you have some guy that wants to be a YouTube star, spends 10 minutes introducing himself before he gets to the actual point of why you're there to learn something. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dave. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Yeah. I was born back in the 60s. You know, it's like, dude, get, get fast Just, forward. Dave, I wanted to learn how to tie a tie. Yeah, I want to learn exactly <laughs> how to tie a Windsor knot. <laughs> uh, I've never been able to tie a bow tie. Real? No, a bow tie or a regular bow tie? Bow tie. Oh, I've never tied, tied a bow tie. Yeah. Yeah. I've always had the hook on bow ties. Yeah. But a regular tie, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's those are easy. Double Windsor, Windsor knot. Yeah, I think I know two, two different. Knots. I at the uh, American Rose Society's banquet, I wore a tie for, I think, first time since the last wedding really? I went to. Do we have any pictures of that? Gee, I've never no. seen him in a tie. I know. No. Oh, really. I would show you a picture of me in a tie here on my phone. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it now because then I'll lose where we <laughs> are. <laughs> yeah, don't touch it. Oh. Got to keep those comments. Don't um don't for Mother's Day wasn't there something involving like bat, brunch, brunch like, food? Don't, don't, wasn't it normally you bought your mom like a some kind of 
boutonniere or something corsage? like that. Corsage or something. Wasn't that like a normal Mother's Day? You mean the carnation like was written up in the newsletter? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That was a good way to get into the yes, newsletter. Yes, if you had the newsletter, you would know all about that. Yeah. And uh, uh, pink if your mother was alive, white if she was dead. That's right. I think. I think so. Not yeah. sure. That was in the newsletter, too. I'd have to reread it. <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine they can still go to our website to sign up for the newsletter I think I, now. I told you guys We're this is on one track. of my first jobs uh, at Frank's Nursery in Detroit was uh, making boutonnieres during right. Mother's Day. Yeah, you did say that. Yeah. You're a boutonniere from way back, aren't you? I am. I was really good at it, too. A piece of uh, uh, what's the kind of fern that you put in the back of it? Oh, oh yeah, leather, leather fern, leather fern, leather fern, piece of leather fern. Uh, you slap the uh, carnation on the top of that, and then wrap it with uh, floral tape. Yeah, that was it, and then stick a pin in it. And then stick a pin in it. Yeah, it I like doing time. that. It was a lot easier than moving the fertilizer by <laughs> hand. We have one more segment coming up, just like that. Quick show. So do stay with us. Uh, taking a break for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. Those on Facebook Live, we are coming right back again. One more segment. Questions, comments? Still plenty of time on this Mother's Day weekend here on Garden America. We are back. We didn't go anywhere, but we're back as far as being on the air. Carla wants some advice on good, long-lasting garden gloves. Oh. Long-lasting in gloves, to me, is like long-lasting and pruning shears. Yeah. Just get a new pair. Yeah. Right. And I mean, and I have some really good gardening gloves, and I'm afraid to use them because I don't want to wreck them. They're like 50 bucks a pair, those bionic gloves. Yeah. So what, are they sitting in your garage or your shed? I think they're in a drawer at home. Use yeah. them. Come on. Uh, well, but but what John you know, brings up is a valid point because, I mean, you – I mean, you leave less, them out somewhere, yeah. and now they're gone. Or you're, or with me, I'm using them digging in dirt, and they're, you know, they're leather gloves, yeah. and they've got the stress points. Yeah. On what the, about so, for trimming roses? Good for that. Yeah. No, I no, use the no. like five ninety nine nitrile, yeah, nitrile cover glove. So that's just it, right? Okay, if you're gonna talk long lasting glove, it's got to be leather. Okay, so right then and there. There's all kinds of things that go with leather gloves. They're going to shrink in the moisture in the well, rain. You just nailed so many things. If they get wet mm-hmm. and then they harden off, mm-hmm. just all that stuff, right? So if you have, if you want long lasting gloves, they've got to be leather, but then you got to take care of those leather right. gloves. Then you can go the other direction in like a thick, um, you know, material. Sometimes they have like a kind of like a faux leather or like a heavy durable, like, um, cloth. Um, but you want West, them to be flexible too, so you can pick things up. And... Yeah, West County has like a midline like cloth faux leather glove that's pretty durable. Carlos as well. got a follow up to this, right, okay. John? As, but, as Tiger, go ahead. But then, as John was saying, in my I do all kinds of constru- construction work, work in the landscape. I have in the back of my truck. They come in a package for I don't know ten bucks with five pairs or whatever it is of those nitrile cloth covered. The nitrile is that rub, like it's a dipped glove. Like it's just got the rubber coating on, on the one it, side, on the oh, one I have, side. I have some of those. over the tips of the and fingers. And over the tips of the fingers. Right. Yeah. Very flexible, very lightweight. You can move soil. You right. can dig. You mm-hmm. can still connect irrigation tubing, still handle your tools, all of that. And because they're cotton or whatever on the back, they breathe, so your hands don't sweat. I have, and if I they have get, those, yeah. And if they good. get wet, yeah. it doesn't matter. They dry out. Right. I don't even wash. I don't wash them because they're $2, and I'll just throw away a pair. You know I what? I never one. used to wash mine either, but I threw a pair in, and I thought, wow, these are just like new. <laughs> they do. They yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. So you can wash them if you because there are very good nitrile dip gloves too. Right. You can buy a nitrile dip glove and they could be five, six, seven bucks just for a pair. Um, they resist chemicals too. Yeah. So so anyways, um, it all depends on you. But if you're gonna go for long lasting, it's got to be a leather glove. My wife has a box of gloves in the, her trunk. Yeah, but, but they're the. They're the rubber, like the physician gloves. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. those don't work so well. Hospital gloves. Yeah. Um, Paula mentions that she got a pair of. The, do you remember the long 
uh, sleeved ones that yeah. we talked about on our yeah. show. Mm -hmm. She said those are great. Yeah, those are great. And they were the nitrile dipped, but with a sleeve on them. Yeah. That right. was really nice for picking up brush or, you know, just protecting your arms also because that sleeve was a little thicker as well. But not super heavy. Like, because then they had those leather long sleeve rose gloves, and those were just bulky. Right. I, I don't like bulky. I don't like to be restrained when right. I'm working in yeah. the yard. So I've, I, there used to be a um, company called Garden Gators. Yep. Yeah. That had right. those, those things. They had leg protectors. Leg and, protectors, arm protectors. Yeah. Did it felt even... like a goalie by the time you were done getting dressed say, to yeah. work in the garden. <laughs> you you know, if you went out exactly. to work in the garden, you had to get suited up like that. That is one hefty day of gardening. Yeah, you got some serious gardening ahead of you. Yeah, exactly. To ward off animals and wildlife. <laughs> yeah. I um, found a... Um, did I tell you guys about the rattlesnake I found in my driveway? No. No. Oh, it was a baby one, right? Little one or big one? It was a baby one, but it had the rattles on it. So it was about a little over a foot long. Okay. And it that's, was that's a good size. It was laying upside down. Whoa. And I I pushed it to make sure it was still alive. And it looked like it was breathing. But I wasn't sure. So I, I got it. I, I made sure I had gloves on just in case. You picked it up with your hands? Yeah. You, well, with gloves. What? Okay, wait a second. It Dude, was laying upside down. I figured it's right dead. Right? Buckets, right? There's buckets and sticks that you could use, man. And little hooks. You're supposed yeah. to use a Well, hook. I put it in a flat, and I was going to bring it in here to the show. <laughs> oh, great. Because I thought it comes alive wait a second. here. You picked up a snake with gloves. Oh. <laughs> A dead snake. Oh, it was dead. You confirmed yes. it was dead. Well, he said he thought it, it was breathing. It was. Well, he, that's the rest of the story. What are you, so, Paul Harvey? a couple days before the show, uh, when I was going to bring it in, it's gone. I well, I took it in the house in the flat to show Shannon. She freaked out. <laughs> then Jesse came over and I showed him, and he like jumped off the couch. I said, "It's dead. It's dead. I want to bring it in if it was alive." <clears throat> but anyway, I put it out on the table outside and just came out and looked at it. He goes, it's still breathing. <laughs> and I never did figure out what it was, but I said, well, look at it. his head is starting to deteriorate. How can it be breathing? And so I'm thinking there must have been uh, some insect laying eggs uh, and there were larvae yeah. going up and down in uh, its stomach. Oh, okay. So I threw it in Happy the trash. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> well, I didn't want to bring it in here. Uh, that way and, and like show you alien hatch out of the yeah. valley mid show. That, that, you know that is so far from left field what he just told us. So yeah, and I found this baby rattlesnake. Uh, it was breathing, and there was larva. And I was going to bring it in the studio. It's like, no, you're not. Uh, you're not doing any of those things. Well, if it was dead, I wouldn't bring it in alive. Uh, you know, we have to go. You know, we brought live, um, live reptiles into yeah. the studio before. A very controlled situation. <laughs> we had a reptile handler for that. Yeah, we have to leave. It's time to go. Hey, oh. till next week? Yeah, till next what? week. What? Yeah. All right. We got more stories to tell okay. us. Happy Mother's Day to all of our very fine mothers out there. We appreciate you tuning in, those on Biz Talk Radio, those on Facebook Live. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be good to all the mothers in your life. And we'll do it again ourselves next week, right here on Garden America. Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Take care and be safe.